Hey everyone, this is DC. Welcome to the Wealthy Idiot Show. I know you're used to hearing AJ normally, but I'm going to go ahead and try something new this week and hopefully keep the same thing going forward. So uh, we're going to try a new segment called Personal Finance in 10 Minutes or Less. So let's get to it. So uh, for episode one, I think I want to talk about something pretty rudimentary, which is savings accounts. So uh, everyone hears about savings accounts. This is a common, uh, common talked about item. Everybody wants to know, you know, is, are people saving? What are they putting their money into? And the word saving in general, I think, is a little bit overused. And that's what we're going to talk about. So when they say I'm saving, you know, what does someone mean? When you hear I'm saving money, what does that mean to you? So it could mean a lot of things. It could mean you're saving money by not spending money. It could mean you are investing. I don't hear investing when I hear savings, but some people may believe that. Uh, and then it may just mean you're saving money. And that could be under a mattress. You could bury it in the backyard in a bucket. I don't know. So there's a lot of different ways this could look. And uh, for us, I, I just want to talk about what savings means and kind of some, uh, some basics of savings. So I read a post the other day, and this is really what kicked off this segment and gave me the idea. Um, a woman was holding 400 grand in a savings account. And she was talking about how she had this 400K saved up and she didn't know what to do with it. And she wanted to buy a house and she needed about 100 grand of it, but she saved 400 just in case. So immediately I'm just thinking, holy cow, you have 300 extra thousand dollars sitting in a savings account, um, earning what could be a lot more in the stock market. So granted savings account rates are pretty high right now, but um, if you look back to 2008 to present, the savings account rate really pinged between 0.06% and 0.20%, which is pretty bad. So obviously today I think I found one at 4.15%, which is pretty good. But again, we're in a uh, higher interest rate environment due to some Fed actions. So a little bit different. But uh, overall, you can uh, you can find a 4% plus today. But again, that's not permanent. So if you compare savings, which is the just basic term of saving money, um, such as like your bank savings account or your credit union, if you compare it to stock market investments over a long period of time, the stock market is going to absolutely destroy savings account gains. Um, savings accounts are known for getting beat by inflation. And I think even last year with higher savings account rates, we can safely say savings accounts were beat by inflation. And I would imagine the same thing's gonna happen in 2023. So um, let's say you invest, you know, we like bringing math into this. So I just wanna introduce a simple math problem that will hopefully help our listeners out to understand what this is all about. So, you know, if you put 500 a month in a savings account for 10 years, okay, so 500 a month, that comes out to what, about six grand a year. So 500 a month, six grand a year for 10 years. If you do that in a 2% savings account, which again, we hadn't seen from 08 to present really until last year, the end of last year, you will end up with about 66,000 after 10 years. So that may seem like a lot of money, but you know, hold on a second. If you were to do the same thing in stocks, something like the Vanguard Total Stock Market Index Fund, which as you know, tracks the total stock market. So it's a broad based index fund. You would have 87 grand if you just had a 8% return. And as we know, the S&P 500 average is 10.6. So if you just had an 8% return, you would still have, what is that about, uh, you know, almost 21K more by using the stock market over a 10 year period. If you extend the same math to the 30 year period, you're looking at a savings account of 243,000 while stocks are about 680,000. So at this point, your gain with stocks is really approaching triple that of the savings account. So again, uh, savings compared to the stock market, they don't really compare. They're not apples to apples, but uh, we just wanna make sure when you say you're saving money that you know, you're doing the right thing, not just saving, because there's more steps than that. So uh, some savings is good. I don't want to you know, demonize every one of our listeners that has a savings account. I think some people are probably yelling at their car, uh, car stereo or at their uh, Apple, uh, Apple earbuds or whatever they're called right now. I know as a millennial, I should really know what those are called. But nonetheless, uh, you know, your emergency fund, we know we have to have that. So for an emergency fund, a basic savings account at your bank makes a lot of sense. The money's ex uh, easily accessible. So if you actually have an emergency, you can get the funds and use them for the emergency. Uh, this is a uh, good thing to have. So we usually recommend three to six months 
of expenses saved in a savings account. I wouldn't go over that at that point. You're just uh, having you have money in the savings account that you could have in the stock market. So keep that in mind. So having all your money easily accessible in a savings account does bring about one more little problem. And that is the fact that the money is very accessible. Recently, I was uh, browsing the financial news and I saw that since COVID, Americans have withdrawn roughly $1 million, or rather $1 trillion from savings. So I don't know what's more frightening, the fact that people had a trillion dollars in savings, which really is, it, uh, it spins me up a little bit, that's a lot of money, or the fact that they actually have withdrawn a trillion from savings. So there are some key points that aren't differentiated. Did that money come from savings and then go to the stock market? Or did that money uh, just go from savings to pay bills or pay off debt? Or did it go from savings to buy extravagant purchases? I, I don't know. So we have a hard time seeing where that savings actually went. I guess people could be using that savings to buy real estate and then turn it into a rental portfolio or flip houses. So we don't know. I'm sure some of that money is being uh, deployed really well, but probably not all of it. So... What does that mean? Well, the easiest thing to do, especially if you're one of our younger listeners uh, hearing this, is to really start saving at a young age. And you want to remove that money from your site before you have a chance to get your hands on it. So one of the big ways to do that is investing in your workplace 401k. You can have that money taken out of your paycheck and you'll never see it in your checking account, which gives you a little bit of a pause to spending it. So it's not easily accessible. Another way is to open a brokerage account at your favorite broker. Uh, we've talked about this in the past. We like Fidelity, Vanguard, Schwab, E-Trade. Those are kind of our top four in no particular order. I use Fidelity myself. I think AJ uses E-Trade. So again, uh, we're not going to pinch pennies on which one's the better broker. All four are really solid, and they offer a really good range of funds, low fees, you know, et cetera, all the things you're looking for in a broker. So moral of the story is invest whether that be in your 401k buying index funds or your uh, 401k buying target date funds, which obviously track your retirement year and make a portfolio that's suited for your age group. Or you could uh, open a brokerage account and buy literally anything you want. Most brokerages have all the funds available. You could also open a Roth IRA, which as we've talked about in some of our articles is a huge deal. So when we talk about saving money, don't just think about savings accounts. I understand as a 16, 17 year old, it's really easy to think I need to stick money in a savings account, but that is not the way to go about it. All right. We need to put money in vehicles that can grow and stock market investments are a great way. I'm not going to get into the other ones past this. We have obviously a million ways to make money, but right now we're just talking about savings versus investing and why savings accounts are uh, kind of limited. So uh, again, to recap, you know, savings accounts have low interest rates historically. Stock market returns an average of 10.6%, at least the S&P 500 does. You know, if you allow stocks to grow over a 30 or 40 year period, you can create some serious wealth that will really help you out in the future. So again, just keep that in mind when you're looking at your uh, everyday savings account that you currently have money in. So I want to thank you guys for coming out, uh, all our listeners, hopefully some new ones. Again, this is going to be a new series where we're going to give you a personal finance blast in 10 minutes or less. Uh, this is going to be a, a huge range of topics. We're going to talk about all kinds of things. Uh, just coming up, we have some real estate. We're going to have you know stock funds in general. So we're going to talk about ETFs, mutual funds, the difference, um, things like that. We'll talk a little bit about bonds. So we have a lot of places to go, and we hope you can come uh, at least hear from us one or two times a week and grab a quick tidbit of knowledge that you didn't know prior. Uh, so again, I'm DC with The Wealthy Idiots, and appreciate you guys listening to The Wealthy Idiots Show.